So here's the, here's the idea. We're going to place steel, and we've looked up the specific heat capacity for steel, um, in water, and we're trying to figure out what temperature they'll, they'll settle at. And we've agreed that it's going to be between 15 and 90, because the water's going to heat up and the steel is going to cool down. And we have speculation on 45, as, as, as Ricky's guess on what it's going to look like. So the question is, how do we actually go about doing this? And what you need to do here is you need to start with just a symbol for your fitter. So I'm going to start with saying, let the final temperature be T. Okay? So I'm just going to use T for whatever the final temperature is. So Ricky's speculating that T is going to be 45. Well, we're heating, one's heating and one's cooling. So we've got to think about how we're going to actually get a handle on T. And the physics behind it, assuming, again, that there's no uh, loss due to bad insulation or anything, the physics is that whatever energy the steel ball loses, the water gains. So what we're basically saying is that energy, or heat in this case, it's heat energy, it's the same you know, Heat is a type of energy, so we'll go with heat. So heat lost equals heat gained. Okay, so whatever heat the steel is losing, the ball's gaining, and that's the that's the physics. That's the big idea. And then it's a matter of using our formulas. So our formula tells us Q is what we're looking for is M C delta T. So M C delta T for the steel has got to be equal to MC delta T for the water. Okay. So whatever the steel is losing is equal to whatever the heat is gaining. Okay, so what's the steel losing? Well, it's 2 kgs times 450 for steel times the change in temperature for steel. Well, the steel started off at 90 and ended up at some temperature that we don't know. So the change in temperature is 90 minus T. And the water is going to gain some energy. So the water is 10 litres, which is 10 kgs, times 4186, specific heat capacity of water. And then we're going to say how much is the water gaining. Well, it's gaining the difference between wherever it finishes and 15. Yeah. So we're looking at the amount of energy the steel is losing and the amount of energy that the water is gaining. And that will obviously depend on what T is. So the bigger the difference here, the more the steel loses, likewise. Okay. So we don't know what T is, despite Ricky's speculation. We don't actually know what T is. So we've just bunged a T in there, and now we should just be able to do some algebra to sort out what T is. I mean, we've only got one unknown. It occurs twice, but you know, we know how to deal with that because we've done a bit of maths. There'll be a bit of shifting stuff to one side and factorising and all that sort of business. So let's just do some maths. That number is 900. So 900 times 90 minus 900T, expanding that bracket, equals... 41860T times 41860, that should be times, it should be minus, times 15. Yep, and I'm going to move the terms with no t's to this side and the t terms to this side. So I'm going to end up with 900 times 90 plus 41860 times 15 equals 41860T under that minus plus 900T. Factorise and divide. So T equals 900 times 90 plus 41860 times 15 all over 41860 plus 900. And then we can crunch away on the calculator and come up with an answer for that. And if it's not between 15 and 90, we've stuffed up something horrible. So 
we've got a calculator that can thrash some buttons for us and come up with an answer for that. You can see a couple of calculators, oh, three calculators going, going flat out. Have we got there, Sam? 16.58 rounded to 16.6. Anyone else get the same number? You get the same number? Get the same number? Okay, so we've got consensus. Two people have calculated and come up with the same answer. So as you can see, the uh, water heats up very little. Yeah, so it doesn't get anywhere near halfway between the two of them. It's just that the water heats up. If you're not convinced about it? You want to actually have a go at doing it. The reason why is that basically... The water, there's five times as much water as there is steel. So already the water's got a five to one advantage. Yeah, and the specific heat capacity is pretty close to 10 to one. So in the ballpark of 10 to one. So you combine that 10 to one advantage and that five to one advantage, you have a 50 to one advantage. So how much the steel changes, the water only has to change at one fiftieth of that to match it. So the steel is going up 1.6 and the water is coming down about 80 odd. So it sounds about that, roughly that 50 to 1 uh, ratio is, is about right. Yep. So that's how you do it. So the key here is you've, you've got to declare what your final temperature is going to be. And then the physics is that piece there. Okay, you've got to think what's happening on the losing side, what's happening on the gaining side and a bit of algebra. There's definitely a wee bit of maths involved at the bottom bit, but nothing that's too scary. Yep. Quite a nice sort of question.